Alright, hi guys. This video is in response to Panareth, who just put up a video on uh, a discussion as whether beginners should start with a kit printer or an assembled printer. Now, I'm just uh, taking this video on the fly. I'm not going to do any editing. So hopefully it comes out okay and I don't stutter too much around the place. So first of all, um, Panarath, great video, man. Uh, great discussion topic. I see this pop up all the time. Um, I have my own opinions, of course, and I'll get to those shortly. First of all, the Kitform 3D printer. Um, in my opinion, it, it's cost efficient when compared to an assembled machine. It's obviously, it's usually cheaper. Um, as you're building the printer, and experimenting you begin to develop troubleshooting intuition so when things go wrong you have a feel for how it all goes together what it should be doing and what sort of things you might change and what what effect those might have and that kind of intuition you don't get when you just buy a finished product you and and another thing when you build a kit printer you have this this pride of achievement I built that and it's making things it's working it sings a song of R2D2 or BB8 or, or whatever robot you're into that doesn't talk English words anyway and uh, so on top of the troubleshooting intuition you also you also get a, a thorough understanding of the mechanical components and and a good understanding of what each part of the printer, what its job is. So when you see things going wrong, and I know it's touching on the same thing again, but you have an idea of, of where the issue might stem from. Um, so the thing is, that they're, they're my pros. They're my pros for the kit form. For the assembled, and I started with a kit, okay? I started with a kit. The assembled, the assembled one, um, well it's time efficient isn't it? You don't have to spend hours trying to sort out what goes where and doing up bolts and nuts and and uh, uh, you know you should, you should be able just to pull it out of the box, do some minor IKEA style putting together to make it look right and press print right? And it should, it should just work. And if you're really lucky, um, depending how much you pay, you might get a, uh, a proper warranty system with your printer because it's been factory assembled and you might have a, it might come from a reputable company. Um, but I think you have to pay a lot of money for that, for, the, for that sort of awesomeness. But let's face it, it doesn't always work. I got, um, I just recently got the Cocoon Create, which is a Wanhao i3, and as Panareth said, it, it takes 15 minutes to assemble it all so that it looks good, and then I've spent another two hours trying to level the bed. And I've leveled a bed like that before, it's just, I, I was in Struggle Town, and I, I'm experienced. So if you get someone who's not very experienced and they, they pull this printer out of the box and expect it just to work like a microwave, you push the button and go, it's it's not going to happen. It, it doesn't happen that way. And because they haven't been through that process of building all the parts and gaining an understanding, they they might just get stuck, completely stuck. And then, um, what do you do? What do you do when you're stuck? I've, I see a lot of people with a mentality when they get a, a, a fully assembled printer they try to print something and the nozzle blocks up or, or they've had bad bed adhesion or whatever the problem is and they just throw their arms in the air and go, oh, I must have got a broken one. This is terrible. I don't want to play anymore. But that's not what we want in the 3D community and that's not where the product's at. Um, it's all about making, tinkering and playing. So. I thought I think I went through a bit of pros and cons with the assembled already. Um, let's see if I've covered everything. I've got a list down here. Told you lost when things are wrong. Okay. Um, might give up. Yeah. Okay. So you might give up on an assembled machine. Um, as Panarath said, you might give up on a kit machine. 
And what I want to say about this is um, if, if you're not ready for the challenge, well, you need to go get ready for the challenge. You need to understand that it's not going to be easy. And, but there's a huge community of help out there for you. And if you, have, if you get stuck, if you need help, um, there's several forums all over the internet, Facebook, um, YouTube, who are willing to help you out. Um, don't get frustrated to the point you give up. We want to keep you around, all right? All right, okay. So with the kit, back, back to the, back to the kit. Okay, so Pano said you get frustrated building the kit, and there might be parts missing. Um, let me just say that frustration is really healthy when you're learning new things, and this is how you put new information into your brain. If you don't struggle a little bit when you learn something, it it's a short-term memory. It won't stick. Um, so I, frustration is really healthy. It doesn't feel like it at the time, but it gets better. Um, the parts are missing and not working in the kit. Well, this is true. Um, it's unfortunate. And like I said before, there's a community of resources to help you out. Um, cheap parts on eBay, AliExpress, or wherever else. If you're in America, you probably get cheap parts everywhere. But here in Australia, it's a bit harder. Um, one of the downsides to the kit form would have to be uh, your own skills in wiring, as Joel, 3D printing nerd, pointed out on his kit wombat wombot review. Um, he wasn't happy with his wiring skills, so his finished product maybe he needed to go back and have a look at those wirings. But at the same time, I understand you you plug it all in and you just want to see it work, and uh, and bam, you, you don't want to touch it again. It's working. And that's fine too, that's fine. So my final thoughts, um, as you might have guessed, I'm a big fan of the kit experience for beginners. Um, I highly recommend getting a kit. It can be challenging, yes, but through the process you develop grit and perseverance. And you lose the fear to touch things and tinker with it and, and break it and fix it. Yeah, cause and that's what you need. You need to be unafraid when you when you go to your printer and you, you want to try something new. You got to just just try something new. You might revolutionise the whole of 3D printing. Who knows? Who knows? And that's that's the attitudes you need to become a maker, a designer, or an inventor of awesome. So there you go. There's my thoughts on on uh, which one to get. Ah, on a side note. Hannah has said something about those people who haven't done research before getting their printer. Whether you're getting a kit printer or an assembled printer, please do research. You need to do bucket loads of research. If you don't have a printer now but you're planning on getting one, go join the forums. Go read up what goes wrong. Go read up what goes right. Get inspired by what people are making. Find out what the common faults are and the common solutions to those faults before you even start. And, and uh, arm yourself with this knowledge that you can do it, that, that you, ha you can have those understandings or at least a... Yeah, okay. An inventor of awesome. <laughs>